One of the most advantageous promotions I ever received came about through an incident which seemed so insignificant that it appeared to be unimportant. One Saturday afternoon, a lawyer, whose office was on the same floor as that of my employer, came in and asked if I knew where he could get a stenographer to do some work which he was compelled to finish that day. I told him that all of our stenographers had gone to the ball game and that I would have been gone had he called five minutes later, but that I would be very glad to stay and do his work as I could go to a ball game any day and his work had to be done then. I did the work for him and when he asked how much he owed me I replied, Oh, about a thousand dollars as long as it is you. If it were for anyone else I wouldn't charge anything. He smiled and thanked me. Little did I think when I made that remark that he would ever pay me a thousand dollars for that afternoon's work, but he did. Six months later, after I had entirely forgotten the incident, he called on me again and asked how much salary I was receiving. When I told him, he informed me that he was ready to pay me that thousand dollars which I had laughingly said I would charge him for the work I had performed for him, and he did pay it by giving me a position at a thousand dollars a year increase in salary. Unconsciously, I had put the law of increasing returns to work in my behalf that afternoon by giving up the ball game and rendering a service which was obviously rendered out of a desire to be helpful and not for the sake of a monetary consideration. It was not my duty to give up my Saturday afternoon, but it was my privilege. Furthermore, it was a profitable privilege because it yielded me a thousand dollars in cash and a much more responsible position than the one I had formerly occupied. It was Carol Downs's duty to be on hand until the usual quitting time, but it was his privilege to remain at his post after the other workers had gone, and that privilege properly exercised brought him greater responsibilities and a salary that yields him more in a year than he would have made in a lifetime in the position he occupied before he exercised the privilege. I have been thinking for more than twenty-five years of this privilege of performing more service and better service than that for which we are paid, and my thoughts have led me to the conclusion that a single hour devoted each day to rendering service for which we are not paid can be made to yield bigger returns than we received from the entire remainder of the day during which we are merely performing our duty. We are still in the neighborhood of the most important part of this lesson, therefore think and assimilate as you pass over these pages. The law of increasing returns is no invention of mine, nor do I lay claim to the discovery of the principle of rendering more service and better service than paid for as a means of utilizing this law. I merely appropriated them after many years of careful observation of those forces which enter into the attainment of success, just as you will appropriate them after you understand their significance. You might begin this appropriation process now by trying an experiment which may easily open your eyes and place back of your efforts powers that you did not know you possessed. Let me caution you, however, not to attempt this experiment in the same spirit in which a certain woman experimented with that biblical passage which says something to the effect that if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard and say to yonder mountain be removed to some other place, it will be removed. This woman lived near a high mountain that she could see from her front door. Therefore, as she retired that night, she commanded the mountain to remove itself to some other place. Next morning she jumped out of bed, rushed to the door, and looked out, but lo, the mountain was still there. Then she said, Just as I had expected, I knew it would be there. I am going to ask you to approach this experiment with full faith that it will mark one of the most important turning points of your entire life. I am going to ask you to make the object of this experiment the removal of a mountain that is standing where your temple of success should stand, but where it never can stand until you have removed the mountain. You may never have noticed the mountain to which I refer, but it is standing there in your way just the same unless you have already discovered and removed it. And what is this mountain, you ask? It is the feeling that you have been cheated unless you receive material pay for all the service you render. That feeling may be unconsciously expressing itself and destroying the very foundation of your temple of success in scores of ways that you have not observed. In the very lowly bred type of humanity, this feeling usually seeks outward expression in terms something like this. I am not paid to do this, and I'll be blankety-blank-blank blank if I'll do it. 
You know the type to which reference is made. You have met with it many times, but you have never found a single person of this type who was successful, and you never will. Success must be attracted through understanding and application of laws which are as immutable as is the law of gravitation. It cannot be driven into the corner and captured as one would capture a wild steer. For this reason, you are requested to enter into the following experiment with the object of familiarizing yourself with one of the most important of these laws, namely, the law of increasing returns. The Experiment during the next six months, make it your business to render useful service to at least one person every day, for which you neither expect nor accept monetary pay. Go at this experiment with faith that it will uncover for your use one of the most powerful laws that enter into the achievement of enduring success, and you will not be disappointed. The rendering of this service may take on any one of more than a score of forms. For example, it may be rendered personally to one or more specific persons, or it may be rendered to your employer in the nature of work that you perform after hours. Again, it may be rendered to entire strangers whom you never expect to see again. It matters not to whom you render this service so long as you render it with willingness and solely for the purpose of benefiting others. If you carry out this experiment in the proper attitude of mind, you will discover that which all others who have become familiar with the law upon which it is based have discovered, namely that you can no more render service without receiving compensation than you can withhold the rendering of it without suffering the loss of reward. Cause and effect, means and ends, seed and fruit, cannot be severed, says Emerson, for the effect already blooms in the cause, the end pre-exists in the means, the fruit in the seed. If you serve an ungrateful master, serve him the more. Put God in your debt. Every stroke shall be repaid. The longer the repayment is withholden, the better for you. For compound interest on compound interest is the rate and usage of this exchequer. The law of nature is, do the thing and you shall have the power. But they who do not the thing have not the power. 